Viewers should be advised that they may find some images disturbing. The arresting images of Oliviero Toscani catapulted a little-known clothing brand to international renown, prompting the world to reconsider the power and purpose of advertising. One still picture can be stronger than an army. Look at me now. Oh. Like that. Never far from controversy, the legendary photographer has now decided to point his camera at one of the world's most sensitive regions. Can't keep the people back. Or they get the picture or they get out. We follow Toscani to the Holy Land on a project with big dreams. I don't know, I might send them to the President of the United States. Toscani is in Paris, doing a photo shoot for French fashion magazine Bieber. He's a master. <laughs> yes. An undisputed leader in his field, Toscani owes his international repute in large part to one particular project in the 80s. So of course when you mentioned Toscani, it was like, ah, oh, Benetton. Um, I knew he was the Benetton guy. <laughs> well, everybody knows the Benetton, but actually Benetton is not my most important work. In 1982, Toscani embarked upon an 18-year relationship with the Italian fashion house, a collaboration that came to define his career. What you aspire to in our business is to create striking, memorable images. And whatever one thinks of the morality, cannot doubt the fact that these were images that were burned into people's consciousness. These companies, they're all the same, and the products are the same. More or less, they cost the same. So say, let's take away everything. And let's do a campaign where there is no product, but just an idea. People do remember the idea, and they combine the idea with the intelligence of the label. And I tried, and it worked. Everybody did start to understand that advertising is not just pushing product consumption, but is an important communication system. Long-term friend and colleague Valentine was there from the start. We start that brand, there was nothing. We had hardly any money to shoot. Then the end, it became an empire. It took me one year to find this angel, devilish look. Who is the angel, who is the devil here? I wonder. One memorable image was that of a newborn baby. In England, they don't mind to see a puppy, but not a newborn baby. <laughs> a puppy is okay. <laughs> Perhaps more shocking was the scene of a family gathered round a man dying of AIDS. Every picture was like a news. So when I say I'm an, a reporter, I am. I think just the, in, the perceived intrusion of a very private, grief-stricken moment and to plaster it up on a poster um, for selling sweaters. You know, I think that it was, it was that juxtaposition which really shocked people. And so uh, the whole campaign was about uh, our condition. So everybody was taken because uh, coming from advertising, when normally advertising just, you know, advertising just. In the year 2000 came a campaign against the death penalty, featuring portraits of inmates on death row. This is the most anti-marketing thing you could think to do a catalog because this is a catalog of products that you cannot buy, and the model are people that you want to get rid of. So there is a contrary of what marketing is. And Benetton was the first company who was standing behind an idea. I think sometimes you have to have the courage to go against the current. You don't have to go against the 90% who are against, but I think expression should be free for everyone. This time the images did more than just cause a stir. My son and his best friend, both 17 years old, were murdered in 1984 by one of the men featured in the Benetton uh, clothing ad. My son, Edward Peoples, was killed and uh, went in a convenience store. How does it feel when you see that ad? It's kind of rough. This is a 
serial killer, terrible people, but of course everybody's got his reason to be so such a monster. Uh, I'm not defending him. I'm defending myself that I don't want to belong to a society that for making justice is a killer. I am convinced after conversations with Benetton people that they, this is a cynical attempt at marketing uh, having nothing to do with the legitimacy of, of a debate over the death penalty. And everybody said, well, uh, what would you do if somebody would kill your son and daughter? And I said, of course. Uh, <laughs> but what would I do if my son or daughter would be the killer? So I do what I think I should do to go against the thing I don't like. That my work. Yeah, I'm hoping that the people who are watching your television station will stay away from Benetton. The protests were effective. U.S. retail giant Sears stopped selling Benetton products until Scani resigned. I already wanted to leave Benetton. I had enough, you know. So. Luciano Benetton confirmed that the decision for Toscani to leave Benetton was both mutual and amicable, after what he described as a very fruitful collaboration with the photographer. Ci vogliono le critiche, le critiche aiutano. Non bisogna cercare solamente il consenso. Unfazed by the fallout, Toscani bounced back and went in search of his next compelling subject. Merci. Bien, je me fiche de merci. No less than seven years later, he sparked huge controversy again. You may find the following images disturbing. Photo shock of a ragazza. As shocking a poster girl as you will ever see. Last month, the anorexic. During Milan Fashion Week of 2007, Toscani covered the city's billboards with images of Isabel Caro. Their joint aim was to raise awareness about the life threatening illness. When he came out the day after, the whole world was talking about it. So you see, uh, when you go and touch the human condition, Humanity respond. The harrowing images of Caro's skeletal frame caused international outrage and were later banned by the Italian government. So it's really holding people it up to people's faces and say, look at this thing, and I make jeans. You know, and your point is, what well, precisely? Uh, so I, I, I think people probably got angry about it. I don't want to look at this image, and you're just exploiting my emotions. I want to photograph what is existing, but we don't want to look at. And there are people that when they look at the picture, they get angry at the picture. But they should get angry with themselves that they haven't got the courage to look into the problem. Once again, Toscani's work divided opinion. Was he exploring new forms of mass communication or exploiting human suffering to grab people's attention? Of course I care about it, but it's not that I don't do something because I might get criticism. No. I do what I want to do, and if there is consensus, it's okay. If there is not consensus, it might be better. Whatever the answer, Toscani's career has certainly not suffered from the controversy. Oh yeah, don't move, don't move. Rather than deter potential clients, his tendency to make waves is often the reason people book him. Obviously, when we're talking about uh, ethnics, uh, diversity, and a mix of culture. His name is the biggest. Uh, it's like, it's just so obvious. Go the back, just a little bit. Ça va? Bien, finito. Next. One thing is clear. A healthy dose of disapproval does little to deter Toscani. Not content with his run so far, he's now decided to set his sights on the world's epicenter of controversy and unrest, the Holy Land. The next meeting organized by Obama, in Camp David, I want to have 100 pictures in the back, 50 Palestinian, 50 Israeli, portrait. And nobody will recognize the difference. That's the idea, okay? That's coming up after the break. Yes.